Well, good morning, everyone. We have a fantastic uh, panel today. Uh, Samih Tukan and uh, Ronaldo Mshahwar, please come on board. We have, uh, well, obviously, the Souk story coming up, the hottest story in town. Can you give us a, a round of applause? Have a seat. Sit. You want to sit, you want to stand, you want to do anything. I mean, these two guys are the founders of the internet in the region. And we're going to talk about that. We're going to be a bit arrogant. We're going to have a lot of fun. There will be no breaking news. So Ronaldo is not going to go into the details of what happened. But we're going to start with you, Ronnie. Yeah. Um, you're from Aleppo. Yeah. And we all love Aleppo. And we need to let's, let's give a big round of applause for Aleppo today. But, but Ronnie, from Aleppo, from Aleppo to Amazon, yeah. what happened? Tell us, take us through a very quick one of what, what were the milestones in, in that journey? So 1996 is when I came back from the US, back to the region. Uh, I had actually just finished with EDS, the company that I was working with, the first kind of network video project, and so kind of the infancy of how the internet can connect people. Came back to Syria, and there was no internet in Syria. What year is that? This is 96. 96. Yeah, and we said, you know what, we're going to build an internet company in Syria. The internet was starting to boom. And realizing there's no internet in Syria, I started looking for partners outside of Syria. S uh, Samih and I have a common friend. His name is Samir, Samir Daniel. Uh, yeah. He introduced us. The, the and famous uh, Samir. I told Samih, we can build, Syria will be huge because there's a huge uh, manufacturing base and we can connect Syrian products throughout the internet. Samih had started a project called the Arab Business Network, I think, under the company called BOC. And I thought like adding the Syrian companies to the Arab Business Network will be a big deal. It was kind of a B2B dictionary right. for Arab companies. And that was kind of the start. Uh, 2000, Maktoub had just kind of launched and Samih was building it. And we thought we could have a commerce vertical on, uh, on Maktoub. Uh, we set up a joint venture called Mazad Maktoub. Mazad, yes. Yes, Mazad. and the idea I was... I thought it was Sukh Maktoub, but then Mazad yeah, Maktoub. Maktoub. Yeah, Mazad Maktoub at the time. Uh, just eBay. eBay Live. eBay Live. On, on the portal. I mean, you have to remember, there's no DSL, there's no Google search, you can't generate traffic, there's no Facebook. Today, all the people who generate traffic to their sites use these platforms. At and the you time, were still Maktoub in Aleppo was then? You were I still was still in Aleppo, in Aleppo but yeah, I was still in Aleppo, and... Uh, we started building a small team in Jordan, again, because so Syria did, was... So did, was there an investment at that time? It was an investment, state? yeah. I think, yeah, partial investment. Yeah, what was it, $50,000? Did you have any maybe, money then, anyway? Maybe, maybe less. <laughs> $25,000. Maybe more. I think we came to saw you in the office. Yeah, yeah, I know. I, I showed you, like, we came to, like, <laughs> get I, I remember you. <laughs> right? And uh, we talked about basketball more than the project. <laughs> exactly. At the time. And then, uh, fast forward, 2006, I mean, all the attempts we did. So Mazad Maktoub was from 2000 to 2006? On the site. It was a section on Maktoub, pretty yeah. much. We and you the, were running that? I was trying to run it. It wasn't working, obviously. We were trying to do too much because it was uh, more like a classified, no e-commerce infrastructure. We're serving all countries in the Arab world. Some had nothing. I mean, there was nothing. They were not even connected. So in 2006, we took a step back. We decided that we needed a focus platform, so the Maktoub traffic was. So, did good. you were you an employee of Maktoub then? I'm sorry, I mean, I'm under Mazad. Did I you think, think of yourself as an employee, uh, as a Maktoub person? I mean, we were scrappy. Yeah, we were partners. Uh, we were scrappy. We took on projects like Al Wasit. Yes, so, so uh, you, they got you busy with other stuff. All, just to get money. I mean, we were not <laughs> able to generate any revenue. So, Royal Jordanians. We used to run their auction and commerce platform. We did right. all kinds of projects just right. to kind of survive. We even, yes. at the time, talked to Arabia.com to have a, like, yes, a commerce yes. portal. Yes, Samir's favorite company. Anything, we, <laughs> anything to just get us some revenue to survive. Yeah. I think in 2006, we kind of all saw the opportunity, and we decided that we need to do a standalone portal. Just the branding, how people perceive Maktoub, what we wanted to do under the Maktoub brand versus Sue are so different. And then Maktoub had a little bit more money then also. Yeah, they had Maktoub raised had, yeah. a couple of rounds, and yeah. we'll come to that. Yeah, Maktoub had raised a bit. So we spun off under Sue. We were still operating under the Maktoub infrastructure, so the legal entities, most of it was still under Maktoub. So I was sitting in a Maktoub office with five people, basically. Right. So Samih gave in us... Amman. In Amman and in here, in, in, in Dubai. We had moved to Dubai. We closed the site, only UAE, only mobiles. We stopped selling 
we became from a general side that everyone could list anything to very category focused. And then and when did it become Sue? 206. So 206, it yeah. became Sue, and yeah. then the rest? We bought the name Sue, and then, you know, the rest kind of till the Maktoub exit. I right. think we continued to operate under the same mode, but we had our own identity, our so own So you were scrapping, problems. you were doing all sorts very of things, scrappy. you were, yeah, you very, were very scrappy. really trying to survive. Very scrappy. A, a global, and then what happened? A global player did come to acquire us at one point. Who? We're not going to say the name. <laughs> at $2 million, I remember, and, and you know, we, like, we said no. It was scary, but we said no at the time. Uh, uh, Lee, one of our board members, said, you know, don't worry, they're not going to come here yes. in 206. They have and the Lee whole world to deep go. Lee has deep pockets. Yeah. If and Lee then, says, don't worry, you, you know, you can, you yeah, can get some And then the Maktoub exit happened, but it was difficult because we had the crisis right. around 208 in the region. Things were not great. Then the Maktoub exit gave us a bit of energy. And, and you got fuel. a check from Tiger right and after the exit. We got a check right after. You got, of the what, exit, $20 million, yeah. I think, something 20, like that. 20 went into Samih Jabbar, and then he's... He yeah, spread yeah, it across I, I all the Samih projects we had. So I'll come back. I'll yeah. come back to you. But Samih, Samih so, so you, you get to see this guy. You're doing all sorts of things. I mean, you were the ultimate scrapper of everything on the internet. People don't know that. How many sites did you buy at, at Maktoub? Before I answer that, <laughs> <laughs> I want to start with one moment that happened. Congratulations, anyway. Thank you. I, Thank mean, you. The, I mean, this is, yeah. Thank you very much. And thank you, Fadi, for being such oh, a no, great I mean, supporter of all I should have all, all started by congratulations, but, sure. but so uh, it's one never moment, too late. One moment that summarizes all our journey happened a few days ago when I saw an email from Jeff Bezos addressed to Ronaldo Mshahwar. Basically, the email said, we were surprised that this is a global standard company. Fantastic. You have... You have... And he addressed it to Ronnie, saying, you have executed like a world-class leader. And he praised uh, Ronnie's humbleness, ethics, integrity, and performance. So I just so, wanted... And we all know that. And that, so, for me, was Yeah, yeah, was we it, call him. You know? We call so him King. I just want to say congratulations Ronnie. to Ronnie. Yeah, yeah. I'm proud to be his partner. But Ronnie and his He was team. really a great leader. He uh, persevered with us all the tough times for many, many years. Uh, it took, what, over 12 years, yeah. of, of, 12 re years. of really hard work. And it would take 12, 14, 15, actually more than 12 years. If you want to start with Maktoub all the way up to today, that's like 17 years. So that everyone remembers building businesses. Exactly. Uh, exiting businesses don't happen overnight. So uh, it, actually, takes, it takes a lot of beatings. Yeah. Actually, the way we started was even before Mazad Maktoub. We went to China at the time of Maktoub, and there was no e-commerce. I mean, nobody knew what the word e-commerce meant in the Arab world. So we got uh, branded gadgets of Maktoub. We made them in China, and we put them as an experiment on the site. And <laughs> I the remember. <laughs> and Aramex delivered these. That was the start of Cat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, and it worked. I mean, we, we used to have a few orders a day. It so worked. That was the first example of uh, e-commerce. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, but you can use it. No, it is better. Yeah, good. Okay. So, so you're, you look, Samih, I want to, so as we, we love uh, Ronnie, we love the soup story, but you and Hussam were, uh, I would call you the founders of the internet in the region. You were there before anyone even thought that this could be happening here. Uh, take us all the way back again to the early days of just before Maktoub was launched and then what happened when you launched Maktoub? And then a bit of the journey. It's good to tell those yeah. this today because you, you were there when it was born. Yes, uh, we were there actually before the internet started in the region. We used to log in uh, through modems to the UK and <laughs> our phone bills was thousands of dollars a month. So that was our main investment just to get the connection. But yes, we started early on. Um, I, it was a tough uh, environment. I mean, nobody knew what the internet. I remember uh, going with Ronnie to Syria, and uh, really our presentations were explaining to people what the internet was. You know, it was email, uh, at the time <laughs> news groups, I think, and chat. This is what our presentation was. And at the end of the presentation, if you remember, one guy came up to me and said, so you are the agent of the internet. <laughs> 
because the mentality in the Arab world was, you know, <laughs> وكيل, we وكيل. are agents, we bring stuff from outside. And this is why I think the Maktoub story and the Souq story is the opposite. We are bringing uh, investors, global investors, to come into the region. But tell us, uh, so you did stuff, you became the agent of, uh, of the uh, Netscape. <laughs> of the you became the agent of Netscape, yeah, remember we, during the flop? We, we did uh, many uh, stuff. We did many stuff. We were opportunistic, obviously, at that time. Right. So the, the market, I mean, the number of users in the Arab world was very low. I mean, uh, probably 100,000 to 100,000 right. when we started. So we started with Maktoub as Arabic email, but then we experimented with all sorts of projects, from selling Netscape software to uh, content to shopping to Mazad Maktoub. And, so and, on. And, then, and then you raised two or three rounds of funding. I think around 2,000 you raised from EFG Hermes. Yes, first, other than me, I mean, you, you yes, were raising you, from you were obviously an angel investor, and uh, uh, then we raised our first round from EFG Hermes at the time. I mean, two million dollars, two million dollars at a valuation of 10. I can't even, I know, remember. I know, can't even was remember. Val <laughs> I was counting the money then. What I remember is that we were never happy with the valuation we raised that. We always diluted too I know, much. I know. But at the end of I know EFG called me and said, can you convince Hussam and Samir that $2 million is a good amount of money so yeah. that they can build their business? Yeah. I never called you though. Yeah. Uh, so that was the first round. And then we raised uh, from Abraj uh, Capital uh, a few years after. Four and a half. Yeah. And, and that was for Maktoub Group, really. That was the email. That was uh, Souq. Uh, before Souq, it was... Uh, Mazad Maktoub, and then uh, Cashew. Cashew was the first payment solution uh, in the region. So really- First FinTech. So re when, the, when you even talk about FinTech in the region, it started with Cashew. But what, tell me about the idea of Cashew. I mean, how, how did that trigger something? In it's your all mind? related, you know. We started Maktoub, Maktoub started growing, people started using email in Arabic and so on. And then we started introducing shopping. Then we had issues of people paying. So we thought, I mean, there wa weren't others coming up with solutions, so we had to come up with the solutions. And the way we did it is either we came up with a solution in-house or we partnered with, with, with somebody like Ronnie or with, uh, at the time, Ahmad uh, for Cashew right. and so on. Right. So we developed these solutions in-house. Many of them worked out very well, and many of them failed, of course, and we learned as we go. And, and you bought so many sites. I want to get back to that. We, I want to get back like to that. You like these stories. But, I, but, <laughs> but, <laughs> But Ronnie, uh, why is Amazon a good story for the region? So I mean, I mean it's a controversial story. I don't want to get you into that one. I will ask that question. But some people say, you know, we're losing our, our good companies that are coming out from the region to somebody from outside. Leave that. Uh, we don't want to be controversial. Uh, others are saying it's fantastic. I'm, I'm one that says, you know, Amazon is a stamp of approval. Why is Amazon good for the region? Why did you think Amazon was your best fit? Yeah, so. And then what is Amazon going to do for e-commerce in the region. So I mean, when, when we met our team, right, our, our team, when we had the announcement, I told them one statement, which I think for us summarized internally why it was a great story for us. I told them, you just joined the most innovative company in the world. Imagine us, teams everywhere in Jordan, in Egypt, in Saudi Arabia, even in India, here in Dubai, joining someone who believes in innovation. So three things that I think for us were an incredible fit, long-term thinking, as you said, Everything we do will take time and we need to be long-term thinker. A lot of investment into innovation as a way forward to grow. Uh, and then huge customer centricity. So a lot of what we've done, uh, building the pipes, building the payments, building the logistics, the after sales companies, we're all really focused on what our customers need, where are the gaps, and as Samih said, when we saw no one is investing and in building these solutions, we did them on our own. So I think for us, those three things are key. Uh, for the region, I think it's massive because A, retail is huge, so there will be more players coming. We have seen in India. Give us, give us an idea. Retail is huge. How big is retail and how small is e-commerce? So 200. And where is, where is uh, tell us about that gap. So, and I don't think it's only e-commerce, by the way. E-commerce is one core industry. There are a lot of uh, supporting industries. Either retail in this part of the world is about 250 billion. Online is five. So it's 2%, not even. So the potential is massive. Uh, and even in the US, uh, it's fragmented. So many, have, many retailers follow different strategies. Walmart, Target, Amazon, uh, Zappos, uh, eBay. Each one has its own strategy. Each one has its own customers. So I think for the region, yes, Amazon will be here. 
and it's and, a, so they will invest they but will there will grow. be also other they will invest themselves so we are already talking about gr how we grow the engineering team in Amman because there is sources of engineer good engineers everywhere in the world so for us this is a massive story for the region and for Amman but I think for retail overall there'll be a lot of innovation coming if you look at companies that support us from content to marketing to to retargeting to email business to mo mobile applications so all these uh, companies will benefit from having investments going to the sector and I think Amazon being in the region will also attract global investors so you'll see other global players come to the region and, and an ecosystem I'm already hearing rumors but I won't yeah. pin you down on yeah. that one there is another acquisition coming to town uh, I'm just getting people excited here but, be surprised. but 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 Ronnie are you happy that you don't have to fundraise anymore <laughs> I mean, yes, I guess. I How think difficult was it? We've been I mean, fundraising. You raised, you raised what? Four hundred and fifty million dollars. Four hundred fifty. Four hundred and fifty. Yeah. yeah Four hundred and fifty. I mean, that's that's a staggering amount. So I think, uh, uh, yeah. So if you talk about like step changes in Sue, I want to focus on few milestones. So two o nine, Yahoo gets acquire, acquires Maktoub. Two ten, we're a standalone business, very low traffic, and we took a step back and said, you know what? We're going to build a we're going to understand what our customer wants and change the way we build Sue. Instead of building, till then we were a platform for merchants, basically. We said, you know what, we're going to think of the buyer, the customers. We had a project internally called Spring. So you were, you were a marketplace. Yeah, we were a marketplace, but all the effort went into how to make the sellers ease of listing, things that the right. seller would want us right. to do. We never focused on really what the buyers needed. Yes. So in 2010, we had a team meeting and we, we hired with Sam at the time. And the focus was to build a project called Spring. We didn't know that Arab Spring was going to be in 2011, but internally the project <laughs> we don't was talk called about Arab Springs here. It was called Spring, and it was it was slated to launch February 2011, right when Arab Spring actually took place in Egypt. Uh, so I think that was a major shift for us because it allows us to focus on our customers and understanding what they need, and we build the stack of Sue, be it the logistic, the payment. The after sales and all the other things we've done to focus on what the customers needed. Till then, we then we realized how much funding you're going to need because building a logistic company, you ran Aramex, you're on, building a payment business, growing souk as as category fulfillment, working on delivery where promise time is one or two days, solving COD problems. They needed investment. So the next addition, and I thank Samir for that, was Asif who joined us as a CFO. And he really changed the way suit works. Till then, we were not also finance centric. We didn't understand what, the, what does it really take to invest and how to plan. Right. So having our CFO Asif join, then we turned into fundraising. So from that moment on till the you exit, spent your life even fundraising. During, I think half of my time. You, I were don't selling, know. you were selling products and fundraising at the we same time. We were selling products. We added Mary, who did the category. So we had someone taking care of the products. We Sam taking care of technology and operation. I'm running the countries and Asif helping us fundraise. So we really had a good team. Each one of us had a different uh, skill set. We complemented each other. We never agreed on most of the things, but as a team, we always find the solution to get together and get things done. This is the only time I'm going to put you on, on the. I, I'm going to push. Would you have liked to go public rather than sell the company? I mean, we always evaluated it. I think. Uh, Would you have liked to stay as Souk, as a brand that came out of the we, region? There was an aspiration internally that uh, we would want to go public, but I think just the fit with Amazon was so strong and compelling. Uh, what we were working on, they appreciated so much. They appreciated our team, even our technology that they looked at. Uh, we always thought that Amazon is far ahead, and they probably are far ahead, but at least from a people's skill, what we do every day, uh, it was just a great fit and opportunity that we, we decided to take. So we're going to expect take. Some, some very exciting stuff coming from Amazon. Incredible exciting stuff. I mean, and for us, getting just Kindle in Arabic to the region would be a huge win for that. I, I want to get back to you a bit later on scaling the business and how were you able to scale yeah. the crazy geography and, yeah. and bureaucratic processes across the region. But I want to come to you, uh, Samir. So, Maktoub gets sold to Yahoo. We all celebrate. It was a fantastic story. I remember it was the first time uh, Twitter was at its peak. It was the first time that an Arab story uh, got uh, trending on Twitter on a global basis. Everybody was celebrating the story. But now everyone says, you know, uh, Yahoo, Maktoub is a failure because Yahoo shut down Maktoub. So let's, I mean, it's, I disagree, obviously. That it's bull, you know. Yahoo yeah. Maktoub was an instigator to make things happen. Tell us why is it really a success 
tell us about the graduates of, of Maktoub, yeah. the people that, the, the Ronnies of this world that have started so many businesses in the digital space. Yeah, uh, I disagree, obviously, as well. With me now or with the... With the no, <laughs> with, the, with the notion that uh, Yahoo Maktoub was a failure. Uh, unfortunately, Yahoo had issues uh, globally and um, they ended up, you know, closing the office uh, here. But I think this was, uh, I mean, I would have liked them to continue and to invest more in the region. But I think uh, the ecosystem um, was sparked by, uh, by the Yahoo Maktoub uh, deal. Uh, I think, I truly believe it was uh, a success story. Until today, if it wasn't a success story, I wouldn't be getting emails until today from young people, 18 years old, 19 years old, 20 years old, telling me I started my company because I read the, the Yahoo Maktoub uh, story. So I think it was a spark, it was an inspiration for the young, it was hope in a region that Everybody knows. And, has and a, how many startups all, came out from, from Yahoo, from Maktoub? Direct, how many startups directly, you know? directly from Maktoub. From Jabbar. Probably 20, 25 startups. Directly. Indirectly, you're talking about a lot of startups. So, and so, I think this number is going to be multiplied from Souk now by probably much more. So if we, if we think ecosystem, then, then Maktoub was, was, was the, the, the basic infrastructure that everyone effectively I, sat on. I think, I mean, I, I want to be fair to what the guys did, but I think a major uh, uh, point that helped Souk accelerate was the Maktoub Yahoo deal. Because we gave Souk at the time $10 million from Jabbar. I mean, that right. was like, yes, you I know, at, the, at that time it was yes. like uh, 50 million today. Right. So that allowed uh, Ronnie to, to grow much bigger and to attract bigger investors. It was the first big check to Tiger and company. Aspers. So the money that we got from from Yahoo, we were able to invest at least part of it back in the region. And hopefully now we can double down even more on our investment. You're so going to continue investing? Definitely. Early stage? I like early stage. I'm involved more with the companies. This is where my passion lies. So I will continue doing that. And now hopefully with more firepower. And, and so the ecosystem, if you go downstairs, I mean, it's did you imagine that? No, I, as I told you, we used to be in, in uh, conferences just explaining what the internet is. And, and, and you are, uh, I know you are the agent of the internet. <laughs> I, I can attest to it. <laughs> and you made so much money out of it. <laughs> but, but Ronnie, uh, Ronnie uh, scaling the business. Yeah. Uh, this region is so complicated. Yeah. I, you know, I've, I was there. I know how difficult it is to move a package from one city to the other in this region. Uh, and I always say the people that were able to conquer the geography of the region are the people that are going to be succeeding. So Kareem, so uh, even Maktoub uh, were people that were not country specific. Yeah. Tell us about the difficulties and how were you able to actually uh, crack it and go to Saudi Arabia and build whatever you built in Saudi Arabia. I mean, I agree with you. I mean, we have four or five businesses. If you're running three, four geography, just do the math. You have 25, 30 legal entities that you just need to manage from all kinds Crazy. of perspectives. So the due diligence must have been And wise. this is why the, I think in e-commerce we needed a lot of capital because to serve, the due diligence was crazy. I've never been around anything like it. But so yes, I agree. The region is a bit complex and you just got to break them down. So we prioritize our markets. We focused, we shut down at one point a few markets like Jordan and Kuwait because it's just too complex for us to deal with all the region. And then you need good local teams. That's how we've done it. We have a good team in Saudi. We have a good team in Egypt. We definitely have a good team in the UAE. And we always use Amman as our back office because at least talent is there and the cost structure was reasonable and it's a local population. So you can just continuously hire young people and grow your team. We started with the floor in Amman. Today we have a building, three, 400 people that are all in technology. So and, and if you haven't thought of the regional presence, would anybody have paid attention to you? I mean, is, is there... Is that, is this, I don't this think you can take a market. What, the technology you need to put in e-commerce is quite sophisticated. So, and I don't see how you can, in one market, just justify all the investments that you make. So you need to build a core and then just try to spread the cost across all the, the markets you're in. You, we think of Egypt as long term, but very promising. Uh, Saudi is now and it's happening. And UAE is always, you can testing, it's uh, in the forefront. User adaptation is quickly to new ideas. So you're able to launch things very quickly and test them and see if they work. And then you have to Saudize them to make sure they work there. And then you go so, to the region beyond so, so that. So give me, give me a view of, of, of five years from now, Ronnie. What, what do you see with, with you? What do you see with e-commerce in the region? If, if so you want to 
if you wanna, because you're, I mean, you should see that. In yeah, five years. I mean, two what things, are we seeing? I mean, two things that, that we, we are very excited about, at least. Um, in a country such as Egypt, you have a lot of local manufacturing and a lot of products that are being made there and pretty much locked out from global marketplaces. I think at least with Amazon, we see us being able to take these businesses global. Amazon runs 14 marketplaces, so adding the supply into these marketplaces outbound is quite important. And I think you already see it with Aramex, right? The, the global trade continuously to grow as people work on logistic and improving them. So I think we will also be able to provide our customers here with unmatched selection, not only from local suppliers, from global suppliers. So you, you'll see Dubai and the region being a hub for a lot of those transactions. Um, we have many countries that still don't have e-commerce in them, neighboring to us, expanding from here is also a third avenue. And, and, and do we expect to see you around for, for I mean, you're I'm gonna be the CEO now, for, of, of yeah. Amazon in the region? Um, I'm excited about the next phase because I want to see a company like Amazon run from the inside. We've kind of always looked at the side and guess what they do. I think having the access of how innovative companies and company that continuously at, at the scale it's at today grows at 30, 40% year on year it's is crazy. incredible. I mean, they're a $130 billion company that grows at 30% year on year. It's crazy. an incredible number. So getting to see how things really work at a different scale is what excites me. Kind of, I want to see the kitchen from the inside. And I think there will be a lot of learnings that we can bring to the region in terms of how people can scale and how innovative you can be and how customer centric you can be. So, I mean, that part really excites me and I will be around for sure, at least for that phase. And, and, and Samih, uh, I mean, you and your partner, uh, Hussam, have been around for such a long time and continue to believe in it, continue to invest in it. Is, is this, is this our time? Is this finally our time? Is this the stamp of approval uh, of this acquisition? Uh, is this telling everyone in the region to wake up and, and, and uh, copy you? I mean, what is the story with, with people investing in the West continuously and forgetting that in our home markets, where we create jobs, where we need to create businesses, they keep ignoring them? Why is it that you invest here and, and, and the big bucks is not investing here? Yeah, I think uh, what happened with Maktoub Yahoo... We What's your chemistry? Is it your mother, your father? What happened? My mother <laughs> is not very happy with the deal because she wanted one billion. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> but it's fine. So, I agree with your mother. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, so when the Maktoub Yahoo uh, story happened, we tried to really to push the local investor, regional investors to start paying attention. And I always uh, said, put 1%, 2% of what you're putting in real estate and in traditional stuff, put it into tech companies, put it into startups. So I think it started, but I think today after, uh, you know, people were hesitant. Okay, that was maybe one off. Some people called us lucky. So I think now uh, with the, with the Souq uh, Amazon exit, there is no more excuse. Money from the region has to uh, be invested in the region. And I think it's happening. We will see more regional players, more local players investing. We're seeing more VCs coming up. Uh, a lot, I mean, angel investors. Now, Ronnie is, is hopefully going to become Ronnie will a, be an, angel an investor now. Welcome yes. to the club. And he can... I'm raising money for my fund, by the way. I can help you. <laughs> <laughs> that I know how to do. <laughs> Trust me. Uh, no, I mean, I want to comment on Samih. Till 2013, we were building everything ourselves. So pay for it, Q Express, our facilities, our software, everything we did was enhanced. If you see in the last year, we invested in InstaShop, we invested in Wing, we found an entrepreneur and launched Helpbit, we invested in an entrepreneur in Pakistan. So suddenly, uh, I think the ecosystem is thriving. We're now able to find companies who are executing nimble, smart, great product, mobile-centric, because that's oh an essential. Oh and I think the mobile centricity in that platform is allowing innovation to happen at a lower cost uh, and a barrier to entry, and hence now we, we, we invested, we stopped building, like we wanted to do groceries so bad, and we took a decision, we gotta find an entrepreneur who's doing grocery well, and then you know we looked at many, and there were many good companies, and InstaShop is one we invested in, and they're doing great. This is not something we took on ourselves, we decided to invest, so the ecosystem is kinda thriving, there are now really? entrepreneurs, people are motivated, and the key are now that they are able to put teams of five, 10 people around them, to be able to make whatever they're doing successful. So we're quite excited. And I think for us, 
and internally with all the engineers we have to to come to a conclusion last year that we also should be investing outside and not building everything on our own it's testament to the quality of the people that are now around us if you allow me to, to add your last last my, my last, last word uh, uh, yeah we're very excited about what's happening uh, dubai is in the center of this what's happening in dubai is great but what i worry about is the rest of the region the gap, I think, is still big between the rest of the region and Dubai. We need as investor and, uh, investors and as ecosystem to also spread our investments to help the other parts of the region come up. We recently did, uh, me and you, a great investment in a company in, in Jordan that does uh, uh, teaching kids, teaching how, to kids how to code it's from brilliant. 10 years old. Absolutely. I think this is where now we need to focus Absolutely. on. Start at an early age and help all our kids, you know, because this, this is the future. If the region is going to get out from the problems that they have, it is the youth and the kids that are going to do that. Fantastic. So we need to increase our investment. Brilliant. Uh, I'll, I'll leave the last word to me. Uh, Samih, a long time ago, used to, I, when I used to print my, my bio, my CV, I used to say, founder of Aramex and founding investor in Maktoub. And then he would keep coming and say, why do you keep putting Maktoub? You, you know now why? You know now why? So. Because now I, you know, I'm, it, it's an honor for me to have been associated with you, Thank you. and with Ronnie, ladies and gentlemen, the superstars of the region. Thank you. Thank you. Fadi, Ronnie, Sami, thank you guys.